Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cleveland Photographic Society Annual Awards. Well, it's not a banquet this year, but we'll just say a presentation. I want to say welcome. As we wind down a most unusual and trying year, tonight we want to look back and recognize those individuals who have worked so hard to keep the club moving forward, those volunteers who have offered their time and talents to serve the community, and the, those photographers whose creative talents and skills serve to inspire us all for our perfect craft. Here's our agenda for the evening. Mike Kopkis, our current president, will summarize the past year, present his year-end awards, and outline his plans and goals for the upcoming year. Deborah Willis, our community service chair, will recognize our active volunteers. And Bill Keaton, our competition chair, will lead the presentation of our year-end competition awards. And let me turn it over to Mike Kopkis. Hello, everyone, and again, welcome to our uh, annual awards celebration. I'll call it that. Um, tonight, we want to kind of recognize the uh, contributions of different people in the club. Uh, when I took over last year, I had, I had set three goals for the past year. To uh, safely move toward normal activities, to develop our critiquing skills, and to increase member involvement. Uh, I will say I think we did pretty good in the, on the first one and probably need a little bit more work on the other two. Um, but let's talk about that first one, our efforts to regain some degree of normalcy. Uh, back in June, we started uh, taping our meetings and uh, we started with uh, competitions, uh, pre-taping presentations and competitions. And those things were, were put out on YouTube so that all of the members could uh, view them and actually anybody in the public could uh, view them. I will tell you, we went through a very steep learning curve for installing, testing, and using the equipment and software that was needed to do the broadcast. We spent a lot of hours trying to get everything uh, to work to kind of shake out all of the bugs. But eventually, we got to the point where we were able to do uh, broadcasting. Uh, at one point in time, probably it was October, I believe, we started moving to Zoom meetings. And that opened up kind of a new world to us. It opened us up to some outside speakers. Uh, it allowed us to basically see one another. Uh, we haven't been able to be in the club and, and visit with one another, but with Zoom, we could at least talk to one another and uh, share ideas uh, before the speakers took over. There were some problems with that, but with our contract, we were limited to 100 participants, uh, and uh, the presentations were for members only, and that was done basically because a lot of the outside speakers, this is their profession, and uh, they wanted to make sure that it didn't go out to the public, so we, we kept it as members only. So most of our Zoom presentations were members only presentations. Uh, with competitions, uh, we also, uh, found out that it was fairly easy to uh, keep the numbers up. Uh, we were a little surprised. We thought maybe the numbers would drop down, uh, but the number of entries kind of remained constant throughout the year. Uh, we also were able to bring in some outside judges, and the, that brought us some, some new insights, some new eyes looking at our uh, photography and uh, sharing some critiques with us. Uh, with classes, we really didn't miss a beat at all with classes. All of the classes that we offered uh, were offered live stream. And quite honestly, and maybe surprisingly, they were generally well received. We thought there might be a problem with people saying, hey, I'm not in the classroom. Uh, but it turns out that people seem to like the ability to kind of progress at their own rate, to stop the tape and, and practice something before they moved on. So it, it's worked out fairly well. And quite honestly, when we go back to live classes, we plan to continue to live stream those classes 
so that people kind of have the best of both worlds. Field trips was an area that uh, we struggle with a bit, and that's mostly because many of the places that we typically go to were shut down completely during the pandemic. Uh, we did begin eventually to do some outdoor venues uh, where we could be uh, fairly safe. Uh, and we expect that the pace of field trips will pick up as more places begin to open up. And as a matter of fact, we're starting to see that already. There are some areas that we need to work on. Um, our membership was down about 30% this year. And we think that might be because of the economy. People maybe felt uh, if they had to spend money, they wanted to spend it on other things. So that and possibly because we don't have meetings, people felt they wouldn't get the full benefit from membership. So we're going to have to figure out a way to kind of bring some of those members back. Uh, we need a better method to find and utilize volunteers kind of matching the skills that people have with and their interests with the needs of the club. And I certainly want to regain the camaraderie that we had before the pandemic starts. This is a great club, a lot of friends, it's very easy to make friends, and uh, we want to kind of regain that camaraderie um, as we start up. So here's the goals that I have for this club year. I want to be able to resume live in-person meetings and classes if and when it is deemed safe. And we hope that that's going to be relatively soon. I think right now we're targeting fall to, to get going again, uh, but it'll be a decision of the board as to when uh, we can start up with, with live uh, in-person meetings and classes. I want to increase membership by encouraging non-renewals from last year to rejoin us and also to look for new sources of members. Uh, I would like to have some kind of a program to welcome new members who joined during the pandemic. So during this pandemic year, we probably had 40 or 50 new people join the club. So a lot of them have never either, even been in the clubhouse. So I wanna have some kind of a program that's going to welcome them and make them fit in, feel, feel uh, uh, like they were part of this right from the beginning. Uh, we want to restart some of the special programs we weren't able to hold during the pandemic. So things like the open critique night, in your style, uh, the macro nights that we did, famous photographers, uh, the mentoring program, and the special interest groups. Those are all things that kind of were on hiatus during the um, pandemic. I want to finalize the development of our new website. We've been working on a, a new website really for the past several years, and uh, we can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're getting close, and I'm hoping that uh, later this year we will have a new website uh, that will be easier to use and will uh, be something that everyone can be proud of. And then we want to better utilize our volunteers, as I said before, by matching skills and interests that people have with the needs uh, that we have, especially in those key roles. So we have to, we have to work on that. A uh, couple of other things that I'm doing tonight. Uh, there are two separate awards that are typically given. Uh, so there's a president's award. Uh, each year, the president, at his or her discretion, can choose to award one or more president awards. These awards are designed to recognize people who provide significant service to CPS oftentimes and largely in behind the scenes roles that too often go unnoticed by the rest of the membership. So this year, I'd like to recognize an individual who has played a very significant role in helping us provide some semblance of normalcy during this pandemic year. And so the President's Award this year will go to our MC for tonight, oh. Chuck, Chuck Fitzgerald. Uh, Chuck has been a member since 2015 and has served for the past three years as our first vice president. Uh, I know for a fact that he spent a very large number of hours in testing, tweaking, troubleshooting our broadcast equipment and software. Um, he has served as an MC for many of our presentations because of his uh, silky radio voice <laughs> since since more speakers were needed this year uh, because we weren't able to hold those special event meetings, 
Uh, Chuck spent an awful lot of time researching and recruiting a wide variety of new speakers, a lot of new interests for the club. Uh, we were able to, to cover some topics that perhaps we haven't covered in the past. And he's done a great job of making sure that every Friday night we have some activity that's of value to the club. So for his role in helping get our broadcasting capabilities off the ground and finding new and interesting speakers to help us improve our photography, I am very happy to present this award to Chuck Fitzgerald. So thank you, Chuck. And then the, the next award is the Burt Klein Volunteer Award. For almost 50 years, Bert Hall Klein was the epitome of the CPS volunteer. As president, board member, school director, and ubiquitous helper, Bert was a constant present and a continuous help to CPS members. Upon his passing in July 2015, the board of directors authorized the creation of the Bert Klein Volunteer Award in order to keep his memory alive and to recognize those who follow in his footsteps in tireless volunteering, volunteerism to the club. So this year's Bert Klein Award, uh, I'm gonna give to Rob Eric. Um, Rob has been a member since 2006. He was a past president and club secretary for the past eight years and school director for the past 10 plus years. Kind of cut in the same uh, cloth as, as Bert. Uh, heavily involved in all aspects of the club. Along with Chuck, uh, he spent many hours in testing the broadcast equipment and also planning how to best to utilize it for presentations and classes. And in spite of dealing with a serious illness since the fall of 2020, he still managed to record the highest number of volunteer hours of anybody in the club. So he's a constant uh, sight in the clubhouse. Uh, so for all the many hours he has spent in service to this club in a variety of roles, and for all the work he has done for this club this past year and over his entire CPS uh, career, I'm very happy to present the 2020 Bert Klein Volunteer Award to Rob Eric. So thank you, Rob. Uh, get well soon, and we all miss you. All right, at this point, uh, I'd like to turn the program over to Deborah Willis, who was our community service chair. You've got a mic. Good evening. It's always an honor to be able to present the awards for community service because we have so many members who volunteer. Although we were impacted by the pandemic during 2020 and 2021 year, our community service program continued to, pro to provide support to local community nonprofit organizations. This year we received, this program year, we received 20 requests, and that is down 73 from last year. We work with no new organizations, but we service a total of 932.95 hours. Our volunteer pool continues to be at 170, and that's the same as last year. And we have 16 members who volunteer their times and talents to um, photograph community service programs. And that's down nine from last year. And our 16 members are Robert Doyle, John Dunlevy, Dennis Glazer, Lee Gossett, Connie Heron, Tish Hopkins, Don Keller, Karen Krinsler, Dan Lester, Bonnie Lusco, Fran Marino, Leslie Nutt, Dan Sandy, Kim Wajulewski, Ron Werman, and Deborah Willis. We have a Jim Frazier Award, and Jim Frazier the, uh, our community service program was initiated in 2007. Jim Frazier joined CPS in 2007 and jumped into and jumped at the chance to become a volunteer. Due to Jim's efforts, word spread about our volunteer program and other nonprofit organizations began to utilize our services that first year. Under Jim's leadership, CPS's community service program won two PSA, and that's the Photographic Society of America National Awards. Jim passed away in 2018. To honor his memory and passion and for giving back and to continue to inspire others to help in providing community service, CPS created the Jim, um, Jim Frazier Award. This award is given to the CPS member who has demonstrated outstanding commitment 
and contributions to our community service program. Due to the limited number of volunteer opportunities this year, the special award for Jim Frazier and our special award for community service volunteer will not be presented. However, each of the 16 members who volunteer will receive a $15 gift certificate, which is going to be in the form of a credit, which will be for any available CPS merchandise when we begin meeting and we resume our in-person meetings. In 2018, we were, um, CPS was recognized and certified as an organization for the President's Volunteer Service Award. We began implementing the program on January 1st, 2019 as a way to recognize our community service program volunteers, our officers, our school of, photogra uh, school of photography volunteers, community service, um, our committee chairman, and our committee members, and other CPS members who volunteer on behalf of CPS. The award has three levels, the bronze level for people who volunteer 100 to 249 hours, the silver level for people who volunteer 251 to 499 hours, and the gold level for people who volunteer $500 500 hours or more. And I usually start at the bottom, so our bronze award, the 100 to 249 goes to Don Keller, who did 116.3 hours. In the silver category, 250 to 499, we have Deborah Willis at 299.65, Mike Kopas, our Coppice, our president, at 345, and Vicki Worth at 343.5. And then the top award, the gold award for 500 more, goes to Rob Eric, who provided 1,256 hours. Now it is my pleasure to turn over the presentation and for the thing that you've all been waiting for, Bill Keaton, who is our com competitions chairperson. Hello, all. Thanks for tuning in to this award ceremony. I wish we could do this in person. Um, as President Mike said, it's been a bit of a trying year for all of us. However, the competition's uh, entries have been pretty close to the same as they were in previous years. That's a good thing. Um, I've worked hard to get some uh, judges from around the country since we did this online this year. Um, I hope everybody's liked the comments from the different judges. I'd like to say if anybody has a person that they think would make a good judge, as always, I'm looking for new judges and I will be continuing to do that in the future. And I don't really have too much to add. Mike covered just about everything. So let's get on with what everybody's here to see and our awards for the year. Would like to recognize the competition chairs. Uh, I've taken over competitions for B competition. Dave Saborik is your black and white chair. Dan Sandy is in charge of creative. I take care of nature. Eric Weathington is your people chairman. Randy Bider does the projection, both digital and print or pictorial. And Mariah Kaiser does our photojournalism. And now we'll get on with the awards. For B competition first, accumulated points. In third place, Carla Merkel. Second place, Tom Bogner. And first place for accumulated awards in the B competition is Jacqueline Murray. Now for the pictures for the year. In third place, Amber Kravitz with a uh, photograph titled Masked Otherworld. In second place, A Step Back in Time by Blake Sugarberg. First place, Back to School, Isla Sikas. Mike Gall. And the B competition photo of the year was submitted by Diane Glatzer, Village of Owa. And 
in charge of black and white competitions and presenting the uh, awards is Dave Saborik. Okay, cumulative points, third place, Susan Bestel. Second place, Bill Keaton. And accumulated points, first place, Jackie Sajewski. And end of the year photographs, third place, Bill Keaton, Golden Rings. Second place, Omar Jeffries, Seldman Cancer Center. And in first place, Jackie Sajewski, 40s Glamour. And photo of the year by Susan Bustle. Goldilocks and the Big Bad Wolf. The end of the year special awards in black and white is the William Meyer Award. Bill wore many different hats at CPS throughout his 40 years with the organization. He was president, print chair, school director, instructor, and co-founder of the Northeast Ohio Camera Club organization. He was a master craftsman in black and white photography. He was a May Show and Jewish Community Center show exhibitor known for his bromoils, a mentor, and a photographer always willing to share his expertise. The William Meyer Award is for best scenic in nature entered into a black and white competition. And the winner is Bob Kowalski, Epic Sculpturing. Presenting the Creative Awards, Dan Sandy. Hi, everyone. For accumulated points, third place goes to Marge Brady. Second place, Jackie Sayeski. And first place, Susan Bestel. And for the photos, the end of the year photo competition. For third place, Margie Brady. Margie, I'm sorry, Marge. Marge Brady uh, got one third place for Prairie Smoke Gone Wild. I probably spelled that wrong, pronounced that wrong. And second place goes to Serena Surinik for Mystical Magical Water Fairy. And first place, which seems like it was part of the last competition, but it wasn't, Susan Bespel got Little Red and the Big Bad Wolf. And for the photo of the year, Moonstruck by Jackie Sayeski. And the special award in the creative category is called the Charles, C Charles Casso Award. Charles' interest in photography began in the late 1950s when he bought his first 35 millimeter camera. He began to compete in the Cleveland Camera Club circuit in the late 60s and quickly became a winner. His interest spanned a gamut of subjects from nature to all forms of pictorial, including his particular love of creativity, getting away from typical perspectives on any subject. He used a variety of formats from 35 millimeter slides to large format black and white in color. He developed and printed both black and white in color and got involved with computer creations using Adobe programs. Many photographic clubs in the Cleveland area enjoyed his judging of competitions and welcomed his comments and suggestions. The Charles Casso Award is for best creative image 
through computer processing entered in a creative competition. And the Charles Curso Award goes to Mike Kopkis for Youth Baseball. Ah, nature uh, competition. I wear uh, dual hats here. I'm the competition chair. So, the award for nature and accumulated points, third place, we have Kathleen Amari, Dave Saboric, Bill Keaton, Joseph Miko. Second place, Susan Bestel, Rick Carell, and Belinda Prince. And first place in accumulated points, Vicki Wirt. Nature Images, end of the year. In third place, Peruvian Lily, Joseph Miko. Second place, Backlit Leaf by Ron Werman. First place, Peony and Buds by Marge Brady. And the image of the year goes to Vicki Wirt for Miss Poppy. <clears throat> the end of the year special award under nature is the Ruth Morrison Award. Ruth was president of CPS six times between 1965 and 1988. She also acted as a CPS board member, CPS school instructor and chair, nature on picture, correction, nature and pictorial competitions. Founder and teacher of CPS School of Judging, she was found time to belong to the NEOCC Council and was head of the council for two years. Ruth was an avid nature photographer and dogged in her insistence that any images entered in the nature division have no hint of the hand of man. Ruth was generous in sharing her methods and often took new members under her wing to encourage them in the art of photography. Her award reflects her insistence on no hand of man, including photographs taken in, in zoos or any artificial setting. The Ruth Morrison Award is for the best authentic image entered in a nature competition. And this year's award goes to Dave Saboric for his photo titled Zinnias. And presenting the People Awards will be Dave Sand or Dan Sandy. <laughs> you can call me Dave. I, I change my name from time to time. <laughs> and for accumulated points for people, third place goes to Jackie Sieski. Second place, Bill Keaton. And first place, Susan Bestel. And for the photos of uh, the competition photos, third place goes to Susan Bestel for Sophia. Second place goes to Jackie Sieski for Reaching for the Light. Ouch. First place goes to Vicki Wirt for Newborn's Gaze. And the photo of the year goes to Rick Carell for a little music. And the People Special Award is the Charlie Award. Charlie Servanac was a judge for countless competitions at CPS over a period covering at least 15 years. Although a club member for only a year before his untimely passing, in his brief tenure, he became a board member and the driving force behind the basic digital photography class. An avid eagle watcher, Charlie would rise every morning at 4 a.m. to check the nests to which he was assigned during the periods of mating, egg sitting, and the nurturing of the young eaglets. He was full of life, funny, creative, and made all feel a part of his family with his photos and stories of his grandson, Max. The Charlie Award is for the best image in people competition after the image of the year. And the award goes to Fran Marino for Beautiful Belly.
And introducing or announcing the Pictorial Print Awards will be Dave Saboric. Okay, people print accumulated points. Third place, Ron Wehrman. Second place, we have a tie, Donna Schneider and Jackie Siuski. And in first place, accumulated points, Vicki Wirt. Pictorial print, end of the year. Third place, window to the soul, photographer Bill Keaton. Second place, time with Alice in Wonderland, Fran Marino. And end of the year, first place, Vicki Wirt, ready to bake. End of the year, photo of, of the year, hibiscus by Dave Saboric. And the special award in this category is the John C. Mahjong Award. John was the CPS school director for 40 years, color slide chairman from 1941 to 1969, trustee on the board for many years, and print director in charge of traveling shows. John also gave lectures throughout the USA and judged at PSA salons where he was known as Mr. CPS. The John C. Mahjong Award is for the best color scenic entered in and only in a pictorial print competition, and this year's award goes to Special Award, <laughs> John, help me out, Mahjong, Mahjong Stormwatch, Jackie Sayuski. In the pictorial projection category, reading the awards will be Mariah Kaiser. For projection, accumulated points for the year, third place, Ronald Wilson. Second place, Joseph Miko. First place, Donna Schneider and Vicki Wirt tied. End of the year for pictorial projection. Third place, Chow Call by Bill Keaton. Second place, Mist in the Valley 2, Marge Brady. First place, Mapleside Sky 3, Rick Carroll. Photo of the Year, Woman with Infant, Richard Ader. And one of the special awards in this category is the Henry Mayer Award. Henry taught an industrial photography class for the CPS school. He became known as the Dean of Nature because of his interest in nature photography. His work still graces emerald necklace publications and some of his prints are part of the Smithsonian's permanent collection. He was recognized as a fellow of the Photographic Society of America for achievements in teaching judging and publishing to further the art of photography. The Henry Mayer Award is for the best nature image entered in and only in a pictorial projected competition. And the winner is... Trio of Poppies by Vicki Wirt. The other special award in this category is the Burt Klein Award. 
As has been mentioned, Bert Klein was a member of CPS for almost 50 years. During that time, he served the club in almost every role imaginable, president, school instructor, school director for 35 years, and general handyman who could fix almost anything. Many credit Bert with saving the club when it was on the verge of disbanding and helping to set us on a course to the success we enjoy today. He was also a regular judge on the local camera club circuit, freely sharing his insights and keen eye for composition with the photographic community. With his knowledge of photography and camera equipment was encyclopedic, in his later years, he turned almost exclusively to sharing images of his beloved pets and other animals. The Burke Klein Award is for the best image of a pet or domesticated animal entered in either pictorial category or from a bee competition. And this year's winner is Birthday Boy um, by Bur Barb Cerrito is the winner. <laughs> the last category for presentation, but certainly not the least, is photojournalism and presenting the awards or announcing the winners will be Mariah Kaiser. End of year photojournalism. In the third place, Taking Care of His Sister by Mike Kopkus. And the second place, Hunting Time for Baby, Serena Cernick. First place, Monk Giving Blessing by Richard Ader. And the photo of the year, Gay Pride Ride, Marge Brady. The Photographer of the Year competition has been something that's been with us for the past two or three years now, and it is for the most honor points in at least three competition categories. In third place this year with 86 points, which I might add would have been first place last year if memory serves, Susan Bestel. Second place with 104 points, Jackie Sieski. And first place, Photographer of the Year for CPS with 109 points, Vicki Wirt. Congratulations. And I'd like to offer congratulations to all of our winners. Uh, we've had a very unusual year this year, and, uh, but we still had a, a lot of participation. Um, at this point in time, I would also like to thank Mike Kopkis for the uh, President's Award. Uh, I really enjoy this club and, and I'd like to do my part to, to keep things going and, and keep everybody entertained even in these very strange times. And uh, I still have more speakers lined up and uh, I think we might even go to virtual speakers when we do finally start meeting. So we're going to keep going with, with the, the different speakers and uh, Again, I want to thank Mike and thank everybody who's participating. Now, if you'd like to view this presentation again, you can visit the CPS YouTube channel. The YouTube link avail available on the CPS website homepage or simply visit YouTube and search for Cleave Photographic. Thank you for watching. While this evening's program was pre-recorded, we'd still love to hear for, from you your questions and comments, please feel free to write us at info at clevelandphoto.org. Thank you again for watching and stay in good health.